one. Mike Evans, the name that NFL insiders are talking about, might not stay in Tampa. Sides are still fall, far apart. John has been pointed out. Lions trying to close the gap, win a Super Bowl. Does Mike Evans put him over the top? Are you interested in the Bucks receiver? Does it put him over the top? No. Does, you know, if he's on the team, do they win at San Francisco? Well, maybe. But what puts him over the top is addressing the defense. Mm. Offensively, yes. Okay, priority at guard. You've got to find a way to keep that offensive line where it's been. But if you can find a way to improve the defense, and I'm not talking about making it the top one or two defense or even a top five defense. If you can get 11, 12. 10 to 15, sure. Yeah, somewhere in there. Now all of a sudden, that yeah, that'll put you over the top. Mike Evans as a receiver and going into year 11, very productive, very good. And, and in terms of 50-50 balls, add something to your offense that you don't have. But he's not a guy that puts you over the top. A lot of drops. For people who are mad about Josh Reynolds in the NFC title game, Mike Evans dropsies quite a few among the, the most in the NFL last season. And he had some in the playoffs too. I get it. He's a productive dude. He's a name. Same thing I said to the texter who wanted T Higgins or at least wanted to know about T Higgins. You have a running offense with a couple proven pass catchers already. I'm not paying for a third or fourth or fifth or sixth option. So while Mike Evans would be a great player on any football team, the Lions have bigger fish to fry. They got bigger, more difficult decisions to make. Yeah. And it doesn't mean they can't upgrade receiver. I just I don't think Evans is going to be a guy you want to be fighting with other teams to sign given where the team is. Do you want to again, is he a top priority? No. That's not the question. The question is, if he becomes available, does he add something to this offense? Is it worth signing him? And I think the the simple answer is yes. What it comes down to is, what's it going to cost you? And does it cost you something else? That's where you start to get into priorities. That's what I'm getting at. That's where you start to get into, okay, if I sign or if we sign Mike Evans to a two-year contract, whatever the money is, does it prevent us from upgrading or signing somebody at both guard positions? Does it prevent us from going out and signing uh, you know, somebody at, at an edge position or a corner position? You don't have to sign everybody. You can draft them. You can develop them. That's so, the theory. But you also, does it prevent you, whether it's this year or next year, from re-signing a guy that you really want to re-sign? Four picks in the top 100. Given Brad Holmes' track record, you would think at least three of them are going to contribute this next season. Yeah. So if you take an edge and a guard and a corner in the draft and you pair it up with re-signing one of your guards, finding an edge and a corner, you've really solidified this football team. Now, do you want to go outside the core needs? Brad Holmes has shown you he'll color outside the lines. We don't have to go that far back. Remember last year at this time? Oh, they got to get a defensive lineman. They got to get better up front. Running back. Linebacker. Tight. A tight end? In this city? A tight end? Brad Holmes a color outside the lines. So I think in saying that, I, I don't think safety or receiver or, or running back or particularly important positions for them to target. But if Brad Holmes goes, I don't know, dude's a football player. He's already shown he'll do that. He's just, hey, this yep. guy's a good football player. We'll figure it out. Put good football players on the team, and we'll adjust from there. I think, if anything, it invites more conversation we get to have in the in the springtime here because nothing's really off the table for Brad Holmes. He's shown that. He'll color outside the running back, 12th overall, mm-hmm. tight end early. Tight ends don't contribute right away. Um, <laughs> Sam Laporta did. Holmes has shown he could be a bit of a wild card, and the results speak for themselves. Yeah, and it, you're adding football players. Would you rather add somebody in free agency? Would you add rather add somebody in a trade? You're all, now you're giving up something yep. that maybe you don't want to give up, or, or or by adding somebody in free agency, do you now make somebody available to trade? 
because you want more draft pick. You want more draft capitals. And if we go sign an Antoine Winfield Jr., does that make a Kirby Joseph expendable? Or give you some depth. Yeah. Ticket texture maybe puts it the best way on the Evans conversation. Short, sweet, easy ticket text. Isn't it time to lean on JMO? The need for another receiver, whether you find it to be a big need or a small need, JMO should make that need irrelevant, right? If he is this first round receiver, third year breakout, had kind of the first year lost to injury, this should feel like, okay, you got St. Brown and JMO and Laporta. It, it, to me, there really isn't enough oxygen, enough footballs to go around to make a big move at receiver in the draft or in free agency. Well, if you if your if your team is loaded with these culture guys, then it, then it's not a matter of how many balls am I catching, how many touches do I get in the game. It's how many wins do we have, how many Super Bowls, how many NFC Championship games. All of those numbers matter more than oh, I had seventy five catches when I could have had eighty two with another team. 